Hi, this video is going to be revisiting a video I made a while back about side chaining. I made this video a while back just showing a few different methods for side chaining in Bitwig and in the grid. And uh, I just wanted to update it to show you kind of the way I'm doing it lately because I feel like this way gives you a better visual feedback. So I'll let you see what's going on. <laughs> So um, the thing I like about this is I like that you can basically, you can see the envelope, the sidechain envelopes layered right on top of the drums. So it kind of helps you shape them. Um, it's just a different, slightly different routing than, than the way I had it before. And then the other thing that's cool is you have down here kind of a visual feedback to see what's the sidechaining doing. So if I turn this off, see here's the drums. So we can see... If I switch this, it'll switch to pre sidechain or post sidechain on the bass. So we can see this is before any sidechaining is happening. And then after. So it kind of allows us to see exactly what's going on and kind of help us shape the whole thing. And then again, it's just nice to have, have these envelopes laid right on top of the sounds so that you can easily sort of shape the envelopes of the side chaining to match the um to match the drums that that you're that you want to duck the sound out and um this is a very kind of quick and easy patch to set up so i'm not gonna like build it from scratch i'm just going to show you how it works and give you a quick rundown so this this one is using midi i'm, I'm re it's receiving midi you can I'll show you how to quickly change this to receive audio if you want to do that instead. I prefer to send MIDI for side chaining, but so the MIDI is coming into uh, over here in effects grid, and so um, so basically the way this is set up is that I have the kicks on C, the snares on C sharp, and that's on on, on C sharp three and C three. So you can see that what what it what it does is it says if the pitch the pitch comes in it says if the pitch is equal to or greater than C sharp three then it's going to trigger the select and it's going to send the gate to this one. So if it's below C sharp so sharp three, which is where the kick is, then then the gate is going to go here. If it's if it's C sharp three or above, it's going to go here. So that just splits out the kick and the snare into these two envelopes, and then. These envelopes are just simply assigned to the attenuate on the volume. And then uh, the way we're, I'm getting the kick to overlay is just simply running audio ins. These audio ins receive from the audio of the kick and the snare. And then for the whole kind of visual element down here, uh, I'm just summing the kick and the snare. And then those are going into the top part of this oscilloscope. And then I just have uh, the audio before and after side chaining running into this select that's coming into here and that's being controlled by pre and post. And so that's pretty much it. I can show you really quickly if you do want to run audio instead of MIDI to do this, because uh, some people just don't want to send audio, I mean, don't want to send MIDI and would rather just receive from, from the audio. I showed how to do this on my previous side chain tutorial, but I'll just give a quick rundown on how you could do that. So if this is the audio we're receiving from the kick, what we could do Oops. What we could do is we can just uh, create a threshold that if it's above that, it will give us a gate. So uh, I'll just go over here and I'll say that if the kick is equal or greater to a value, so this value will be our threshold, create a gate. Okay? But as you can see, it gives us these really sloppy gates. So we would just want to get a gate length. over here uh, hmm. we could just kind of play with this until we get what looks like a clean gate and now that looks like a clean gate it's, ca it's catching each one of the kicks so now we could just use this kind of setup 
instead of the gate, just have this run into the input of the envelope. And we could do the same thing for the snare. So that would be a way you, you could just switch this setup to be audio instead of MIDI. I prefer to run MIDI. One of the reasons that I like to sometimes set my uh, the MIDI sends a little bit early so that it kind of already ducks starts ducking out the bass like uh, before the drum hits. So it's kind of already starting to duck out before the transient. And one of the thing, one of the reasons too is that I like to sometimes put a little bit of a fade on the envelope so that to kind of help prevent clicks from the side chain so that basically the aim would be that this point right here is where the transient of the drum hits so that it's so that if you place the MIDI that's sending into it a little bit early then um it starts ducking out and it kind of like like right before the drum hits and then it ducks out at this point so that's just one reason why I like to um, to use MIDI instead of audio for um, doing side chaining. Uh, but you know, m maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. There's everyone's got their own ways of doing that stuff. So um, yeah, this uh, this is the side chain setup. And in terms of the audio, this isn't doing anything different than the side chain setup I showed on the on that old video, but. The, just the one thing again I like about this is just simply the visual feedback because I feel like it kind of helps me helps make decisions in what your envelopes should be for the sidechain. All right, uh, that's it. Cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.